So let's uh, mess up our pretty little scene right here, and we'll uh, add in uh, one kind of rogue element that just, uh, it'll be a physics-based body, and I think it'll be fun to take a look at uh, how easy it is to just drag in something, give it some physics properties, and let it kind of see what happens. Uh, so I just dragged out color sprites. I don't need to set the name and uh, the, the class type for right now, because uh, I'm not going to really interact with it. I'm just going to let it float around, do whatever. So all I'm going to do is put in a texture right here, and then uh, scroll down to the the physics definition and I've got three types here bounding rectangle bounding circle you can imagine what those do but here's the important one alpha mask click on that and you'll notice this little blue line shows up around the shape and it's using the alpha data to define the actual body of it so it's kind of a true rep representation of our uh, texture and uh, I've got some kind of obvious settings over here uh, affected by gravity if I untoggle that it's not going to be affected by gravity uh, let's uh, leave it toggled on though and we'll let it just kind of fall down uh, softly to the the bottom of the stage the gravity in the scene um, is really not that much it's um, so it's a kind of a fraction of what kind of the default gravity would be. You can so you can see things move down uh, relatively slow there. Uh, when it does hit the bottom, it's going to start to just kind of wobble off to the side. And I've actually got a timer in this scene right now that is reversing uh, gravity, so it's going to kind of temporarily go up and then it's going to temporarily go down. And uh, what's really cool is this is an object I can knock around too, so I can actually kind of bump this star into it which also has a phys physics body and it's going to do something and, and also too there's a a, a noise uh, generator in here or a noise field that is uh, kind of making these stars wobble so uh, I wasn't even really sure what this cloud uh, was going to do and uh, and then some of your other kind of basic options are uh, just uh, disallowing the rotation of it so it would never actually rotate if I uncheck that and then the dynamic property would if I uh, uncheck this it's uh let's just uncheck all of them it would kind of just turn into a wall and you might think oh why would i use that well you could well you know what here let's uh let me set it to none momentarily and we'll set it back on uh if uh what this would do is it would make it so that it's uh it, it's just going to be immovable and you can see now our cloud is no longer moving around, but uh, it does still retain its physics body. So uh, you could combine in some kind of uh, game controls. We do have uh, features in the kit for uh, pressing down and uh, moving a, a character around. So you could have just a, a simple maze or something like that that the, uh, the lead character's got to navigate through. But we've also got properties for changing the... Uh, well, one of them would be the dynamic feature or the gravity over time. So you could set up a time, an event timer, and the event would be as simple as dynamic off or dynamic on, at which point uh, possibly this cloud, if it was hidden outside of the visible area, would drop down onto the scene. And, you know, of course, that's going to collide with all of your other physics objects and possibly create a big old uh, mess. So the tale that you're telling here uh, could obviously change over time. You know, the the, the child reading it uh, might get some sort of warning that, hey, you better go to the left in a second, you know, and then they'll move their character to the left and voila. So uh, it opens up a whole world of uh, possibilities.